What we're going to be working on here is establishing excess and limiting reactants. The question that we've been given tells us to assume that we have 6 grams of NH3 and 2.1 grams of O2. They're mixed together and they react to form the following products based on the equation below. So NH3 and O2, so ammonia and oxygen, are both reactants and NO and H2O are our products. What we're supposed to be finding is which reactant is the limiting reactant. So let's talk about really quickly what limiting reactant means. Limiting reactant is the reactant that dictates the amounts of everything else that is produced. So if one reactant is present in a smaller amount, it will get used up first. And it will subsequently dictate the amounts of products that you can obtain. So, in order to figure out which one of our reactants that we were given is our limiting reactant, we much, must figure out which one limits the amount of one of our products. So, with that in mind, what we're going to do is we are going to first select a product to solve for. So, the product that I'm going to choose is NO. Okay, so the NO is what I generically chose. You could have picked H2O, it doesn't really matter. Um, but NO is what we're going to be solving for. Now, the next thing we're supposed to do is we're going to determine the amount of that product we can make based on each of the reactants that we start with. Okay, so if we look at this from the perspe perspective of given and solve for, we've been given two items. We've been given 6.0 grams of NH3, and we've been given two, excuse me, 2.1 grams of O2. So we've been given two reactants. Now, what we're going to solve for, okay, is moles of NO. Okay, so this could have been moles of H2O, um, just as easy as easily as it could have been moles of NO. Um, I chose uh, NO because that's the one that I wanted to select. If the problem above tells you which one to solve for, if it tells you H2O, if it tells you NO, um, then you would have specifically selected the one that they told you. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to adjust this in the typical way that we've seen with other stoichiometric problems. As we know with stoichiometric problems, we know that we must take what we are given and convert it into the language of the equation. The language of our equation is moles, so both NH3 and O2 must be converted into the language of that equation. So if we start out really quickly with our 6 grams of NH3, in order to convert into moles, we need to get into the kingdom. Right? So we're going to be dividing, and we're going to be dividing by molar mass which is going to be 17.03 grams per mole. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do that calculation, and that's going to give us 0 0.35. Um, our units of grams cancel. We're left over with moles of NH3. Okay, now we need to do the exact same thing for our other given, which in this case, 2.1 grams of O2. Once again, we're converting into moles, so we know we're going to be dividing. Okay, so one mole, O2, divided by 31.98 grams of O2. Okay, and this is going to give us 0 0.066 moles of O2. So now, I've taken my givens, and I've converted them into the language of the equation. So now what I must do is I must take each of these amounts and convert using the mole ratio into what I'm solving for, which is moles of NO. So we're going to do that next. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my 0 0.35 moles of NH3. Okay, And I know that I want to get into moles of NO. That's what I'm solving for. So what I must find out or figure out is the relationship, the mole relationship between NO and NH3. And just like regular stoichiometric problems, I get that from the balanced equation. So if I come over here, I see that I have 4 moles of NO for every 4 moles 
of NH3. So that one-to-one -one relationship is going to make our calculation very easy. Okay, so I have four moles of NO. Notice I am doing the workout. I'm showing how I converted from one substance into the other. You need to make sure you're always doing this. Okay, so obviously 0 0.35 times 4 divided by 4 is going to give me the same answer as what I started with. However, when I do my unit evaluations, moles of NH3 and moles of NH3 cancel, and moles of NO are left. Okay, I'm going to repeat this same process for my given oxygen. Okay, so I get my mole ratio between NO and oxygen. Notice this one's a little different. So 4 moles of NO to 5 moles of oxygen. Okay, I go ahead and I calculate that out, and that's going to give us 0 0.053 moles of NO. Okay, so now that we've established the amounts of NO that can be produced from the given amounts of NH3 and the given amounts of NO, we can then figure out which one of the given reactants is our limiting reactant. So what we're going to do here is we are going to compare the amounts that we see here. Okay, the one of these two that is smallest in terms of amount is going to be sourced from our limiting reactant. So 0 0.053 moles is a smaller quantity than 0.35. So 0 0.053 is sourced from oxygen. Because 0 0.53, excuse me, the 0 0.053 is sourced from oxygen, oxygen is our limiting reactant. Okay? Our limiting reactant is the thing that dictates or limits the maximal amount of products that you can get. In that same way, uh, or in that same thought process, if O2 is our limiting reactant, NH3 is therefore going to be our excess reactant. Okay, And that's the thing that's left over, it doesn't get completely used up, and it doesn't dictate the maximal amount of product that you can get for a specific set of conditions. So as a quick rehash of what we've done, First, we took what we were given okay, and converted it into the language of the equation, which is moles, so basic stoichiometry, uh, or basic first step of stoichiometry. The next thing we did was we took um, the, the givens um, that were converted into moles and used mole ratios between a product that we were ch that of our choosing and um, obviously the reactant that we were looking at to calculate the amounts of that specific product. Once we calculated that specific product, we then compared the amounts of that product that we obtained. The one that was present in smaller quantity was therefore going to be sourced from our limiting reactant. So the 0.053 moles that we see here of NO was sourced from O2. So O2 is our limiting reactant, and by default, NH3 is our excess reactant. This is a basic approach to establishing excess and limiting reactants. Now, the second portion of this question asks us to figure out what the theoretical maximum yield of our products is. Now, in this case, we have already done the work for one of our reactants. Remember, whatever calculation or whatever um, work we've done with the limiting reactant, which in this case is O2, that answer is going to be the theoretical maximum for that specific product. So in this case, this number right here, this numerical value, is the theoretical maximum of, of NO that can be produced from the reaction conditions described above. Now, if I wanted to know the theoretical maximum of H2O, I would still use the relationship that you see here, or this setup that you see here. However, instead of using six or four moles of NO, I would replace this with six moles of H2O. I would multiply my 0 .6, 0 0.066 moles of O2 by six moles of H2O, divide by five moles of O2, and I would subsequently get my new molar amount of H2O. That would therefore be the theoretical maximum for my H2O. 
The main thing to remember is that you're always going to be utilizing the limiting reactant to calculate any theoretical maximums. Okay, All of the products that you may calculate for um, will always be considered or based on that limiting reactant. Your excess reactant is that reactant that is left over or that is abundantly present, um, so it does not get used up. So making sure that you figure out your limiting reactant is the first thing you must do before you do any type of yield calculations or amount calculations, especially when you're given multiple reactants. So in the previous problem, we established our limiting reactants and we figured out the theoretical maximum of NO that can be produced. So um, in the previous slide, we said that 0, 0.0 Five, three moles of NO is our theoretical maximum produced from these amounts of reactants. Now remember, O2 was our limiting reactant, so that's what dictated the 0 0.053 moles. Okay, so this theoretical maximum is going to be the value that allows us to calculate percent yield. Okay, so percent yield is basically your actual amount or your experimental amount of substance divided by your theoretical multiplied by 100. Okay, this is going to give you your percent yield. So in the problem here, okay, they've told us that 0 0.0025 moles of NO are produced from this reaction. So that's how much they were able to isolate, um, clean up, measure, and record. Okay, so 0 0.0025 moles of NO are produced from the reaction seen above. They want us to calculate what the percent yield of that reaction is. So I've been given my actual and my theoretical was calculated using the steps on our previous uh, slide. So the way we're going to calculate our percent yield is we're going to take our um, 0 0.0025 moles of NO, okay, divide by our theoretical maximum, which we calculated previously, okay, and we're going to set it up like this. This num is going to give us 4.7%, um, okay, and just like you wouldn't get it, want to get a 4.7% on a quiz or a test, um, a yield, a, a product yield of 4.7% is usually considered pretty terrible. Um, there's various reasons why low percentage yield um, can happen. Um, some is experimental error, um, some is uh, due to equilibrium and things of that sort. And those are things that we'll discuss uh, later on in the semester. Um, basically, though, what you need to understand here is that uh, two major features are that, first of all, when you're calculating your percent yield, you need to make sure that your units are the same. It can be moles and moles or grams and grams, um, kilograms and kilograms. It doesn't really matter, but the units on both the actual and theoretical amounts must be exactly the same. Also, the substance that you're plugging in here has to be the same. You can't have, you know, O2 up here and NO down here and expect to get a percent yield that actually means anything. So your units and substance need to match. Also, make sure that you're doing this multiplication by 100. That is what gives you the percentage um, uh, feature. Otherwise, if you just leave it in, in this type of format, all you're giving yourself is the decimal, which could be informative as well, um, but we usually ask for it with respect to a percentage. So this is how you would calculate percent yield using your theoretical maximum of a specific product. If I was asking this question, Asking the same question with respect to the amount of H2O produced or the theoretical yield of H2O, um, I would approach it in the exact same way. The difference you'll see, though, is that your moles of NO will not be moles of NO that's given. You would be given your amount of uh, H2O. You would subsequently also need to calculate your theoretical maxima for H2O, so you would need to do your stoichiometry steps there in order to calculate that. You would subsequently obviously be plugging in your actual amount of O2, your theoretical amount of O2, and multiplying by 100. Uh, this is just the basic steps for percent yield. 
Um, and obviously these will be important in calculations uh, for laboratory as well as assessment information on tests and quiz questions.